Hello, in this tutorial I will teach you how to decompile a wall model and make use of it in XSI Mod Tool 7.532-bit. I have added the links to the different downloads of these softwares in the description, so just click them if you need them. If you already have them, just pay attention. So, the first thing off is to open Studio Compiler and configure it. Okay. Now, this one is already set for me, but yeah, here you go. This is my settings, and it normally works if you're using the latest Orange Box engine. If you're using uh, Episode 1 engine, you just write Episode 1 instead of Orange Box. But uh, mostly, it's best using Orange Box these days. Now, there are some bugs with this software, and that is when you locate and browse for the different files and directories in Studio Compiler, they normally make the program freeze. <clears throat> I don't know why, uh, and I don't care. But the basic fix is to, for example, if you want to find this folder, you just locate it on the Explorer, and you just copy this and paste it in here instead of clicking here and locating it so if you're having those issues that is the proper fix now model compile or decompile we are going to make a decompile I just copy this I paste it in here I do the same thing here this one is the output this means that whatever directory I have here means my model file my new decompiled SMDs and decompiler QC file will come in this folder. And now this is the location of the model I want to decompile, which is the V underscore SMG underscore MP5 dot MDL. Do not fix rotations on animation. Always check this one. Don't trust this program. It, it doesn't fix your animations. I've tried it. So it may be fixed some, but normally 80% of them gets fucked up it's better just you know fixing this yourself is much easier you just write rotate minus 90 in the QC file and it's done so it's not a big deal so here we go here's the decompile file this is the this is the file that kind of brings everything together here you have the sequences which is the animation shoot the animation 1 2 and 3 and draw. This is when you firstly choose the weapon and you open and you know draw it off. Reload and here you have the event for emitting sounds and this is what frame of the animation. An animation can be up to thousand frames, some hundred. Really depends on what kind of thing you're animating. If it's a NPC it might be even more frames but if it's a model like a weapon you know might be fewer frames but yeah this is a view model and there are some rules on a view model you don't normally have to change a lot of different things this is a Counter strike source model and I'm converting it to Half-Life 2 so the process is basic if I would want to fix different things here and, and I don't know what to do then what I'm doing as using a program called GCFscape. This lets you access GCF files in Steam Apps folder. So that's a really basic tool. It's really simple to use and it's really nice to have. It's really handy. It, it, uh, I use it all the time for different things when I want to help friends and so on, decompiling kind of shit. So yeah, I already have it decompiled in my mods working folder. The original SMG, let's see, I have some Weapons working on here. Now I'll just find here's the original SMG1. And here's the view model for SMG1. Oh, this was the world model. What the hell? And I don't think I have the view model. Right here. Oh shit. Oh well. Well, I don't really need it at the moment. But let's just say if you locate it. Well, first you're going to go to Steam Maps and you open Source Models 
and you just go to models, weapons, and VSMG1. And you decompile it, and you will have something similar to this, but you will have something saying like act VM recoil. You will have this three times, which means if you don't have this, when you come to that animation, you won't animate anything, so your weapon will just be silly. So what you have to do is to just cope by one of these shoot animations and call them four. But this won't work yet. So what you have to do to make this work is to copy this shoot number three, change its name to shoot four, uh, without caps, like this. Now you have recall one, two, and three. So now this will work well. And you can change this to be, this is the more muscle flash and release of brass, but this doesn't work for Half-Life 2. So this is crap and you don't need it. You can just remove it or you can add the SMG1 muscle if you want. That you'll find out when you decompile the VSMG1. I don't have it here and I don't remember it, so we'll just skip that part. But yeah. Uh, most important here is to adding rotate. Now I get some freaky ass message. That was great. Now anyways, you need to add this because if not, you won't be able to see your weapon because it will be rotated wrong. So you need to rotate it back into position. I know we'll take it in front of the FPS. I have no idea why I do it, I just do it because that has always worked for me. Could put it off to FPS, but don't put it here, because then you won't have any FPS and it will complain. Like this. Now this one is actually ready to be used for for Half-Life 2. Just you need to add the, the script file with the different weapon sounds like this. You could change them to SMG, but the SMG doesn't have these, so it won't help. Now, you need to change this one to SMG1 before you proceed. Okay, so that's the decompiling part. Now, if I want to compile this, I go to Model Compile. I had it already ready. But yeah, you just write it in here and you write Model Decompile QC. You can edit it from here as well. You can compile it here. <clears throat> so this is the compile log. It gives you information, what's wrong, if everything fine. If your compile log seems like this, everything is fine. So no worries. And you realize you want to fix something or change something or delete something or whatever. Then you have to use either 3ds Max or XSI Mod Tool. I find XSI Mod Tool more user friendly and it's more it's more easy to use it's not too many tools and it's more just for modeling for different like uh, crisis modding half-life 2 modding and all this but 3ds max is you can use it for so much more than modeling you can use it for animation you know animating movies and all this so it's so many different tools and you know it's probably easy to start learning but Finding information about it is still a little hard, but yeah, I know how to do this in 3ds Max too, but I'd say it's much quicker and easier to use XSI Mod too. But of course, there are probably many good features in 3ds that you don't get in XSI Mod too, but this one works well, so who cares? Okay, click on 8 to open the Explorer. Ooh, I don't know. Select your mesh. Here you see all the bones that are weighted on this model, this mesh. If you want to see the different bones and such on your model, you click on this one. Here you see all different bones and you can highlight them down here. You find all different bones. This is a typical CSS model filled with no information. If you open, for example, models from the Defeat Source or Half-Life 2, You'll see like wall of biped, hand, and finger, and chest, and all this. 
play even on weird things. But here you just have bone, so you don't really know. But anyways, if you want to apply, if it's a wool model, the way to add bones is going to envelope. When you envelop something, you just click on the bone you want to envelope to the model, and you right click. This won't complain because it already has, so it won't work very well. If you want to take away all current bones, you click on freeze. And if you want to, for example, if you have two meshes and you want to merge them, you for example click on mesh here and then you click on con the left control and you click on the second mesh let's say we now have two meshes selected and you will then go to model poly mesh and it should be merge when you have merged them you will have a new mesh called poly mesh in this selection what you have to do is to click on this poly mesh and click on freeze n if you don't do that and you delete the other meshes, then parts of the poly mesh will be removed as well. And also click on freeze all transforms. Which is necessary because if you don't do that, it will really bug up in game. If you want to delete different parts, I use this selector to, for example, select whole parts. And I click Alt Delete to remove different parts of the model. And this does not actually affect the bones, which is a nice thing. So you can just remove things without actually messing up the model. You could, for example, remove the hand just for fun. But using raycast only kind of takes away the side you selected on. So the other side will still be left. If you use the selector, it takes away everything, which is a little handy. Depends which case you're in. And if you want to take away all the bones, you click on dummy one, for example, and select three. And you take away everything. Because if I do like this, I, if I just select, select it like this, I can't take away anything. Because I need to select all the base trees. You know, I need to unfold everything until I can't unfold it more, and then delete. But select tree does it for you, so much quicker. Now I'm just messing up this model to give some examples. Now this one has no bones. When you have all the bones here in the selector, you can do export weight map. You can only export weight map if the bones are attached to the model. This kind of stores the information and coordinates of where each bone was attached to on the model. So you can import them if you, for example, want to move the model. It's, it's uh, much easier to to just freeze it and take away all sequences and all these shits and then you rotate it afterwards if you're, f if you're happy with results you just freeze, freeze all transforms and this stuff and you're ready and then you just import the weight map again for example when you're happy with results you take off these because they might take away important different bones in your model, locate, overwrite, okay, there you go. If you don't have the world tool or add-on to install it, you just gotta place the, you just gotta place this uh, XSI add-on file in some random folder, you locate it, okay, click on it here, install, restart XSI, and it should be here. If you don't have it here and it just says like VMF export or something, you've got to go to the base folder, which is here. Go to soft image, application, bin, XSI, XE, and it should work. Now, that's the basic part of decompiling a model, open it in XSI, modify it, and it export it again. If you for example, export the uh, world models, you also have to add a physic mesh. So it's a little different there. I have some other models here. Um, I might have one world model somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. I think I'll have one here. 
Here I have one. Here we got a world model. For world models, you gotta add this physic model, physic collision mesh. This is normally everything you have to add for a normal world model weapon. But for NPCs, you have to add much more. But I will not explain anything of that right now. But this is the basics of efficient collision, a physic model for a world model. You only need it on world model, not on view model. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know. And here we got the muscle flesh events you can add instead of the events that don't work with the, the breath release and that stuff. So yeah, Ellen position, no need to think about. Doesn't really matter what Ellen position you have. This one is fine enough. Attachments. These are kind of handy if you make a mod and you for example make an attachment like muscle you can add particles you can program particles onto the muscle or you can even add particles to the muscle through this file here but it's much easier and more safe using using the programming programming it on I tried using it on a QC but it didn't work as I expected it to it wasn't that handy but of course if you can't program if it's just for Half-Life 2 or something then you have no other choice than use it as a QC file and you can find many examples of how to do that on Valve developer community site yes that's actually everything it's not a big process it might seem long but when you first learn the hang of it get the hang of it it's pretty easy it goes pretty fast now, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.